skip it. So, good morning. Uh, my name is Attila Moroshi, and uh, I work for Sofas. And this topic will be about where should I host my mower. So, um, a couple of words about um, the agenda. The first thing we will uh, touch that um, how to collect IP address for uh, which are belongs to uh, FTP servers. It's very easy nowadays. Um, how to make some test which uh, with some uh, costume one and how you can test uh, IP address if you have some additional uh, needs for for testing them. Uh, and then we will analyze the results. Uh, we will touch one malware, one threat which uh, abused this protocol, um, and uh, there will be some funny cases uh, uh, at the end of the presentation. So, how to collect uh, and get IP address which are belongs to uh, to a dedicated protocols? Nowadays, it's very bubbling topic, and there are a couple of services you can use nowadays. Um, for example, Sodan or Census. Um, or you can make the uh, um, scanning process by your own, but um, I don't want it because it's uh, it's expensive, type or something, and uh, and there are good services to use it. And I'm not uh, interested on the protocol itself. I would like to do something more. So if there is someone who already did this job, I just use uh, the results of it and do the next step and analyze the data on the on the servers or or the IP uh, we get. So um, in this research and um, in um, ordinary days, I use census to get uh, a good hint about the, the device and uh, the IP address. So how could um, um, a process uh, looks like that uh, get uh, pre-filtered data from one of the services. As I mentioned, I use census. Uh, then do the test. In this case, uh, I test the FTP servers to check the port uh, 21. Is it open? And tries to log in with anonymous uh, users. And if I could it, um, tries to write uh, uh, the disk and test that do we have write access on the disk or, or not, which is uh, not very good, uh, I think. And then we get uh, the results and then analyze it. So how this process could uh, look like? Then get the IP address, check it, and, and fill the list. So if you don't want it uh, in this way, you need some other tools for it. Uh, so I develop a, a scanner. It's called Scanner Framework, which uh, could be fitted with IP addresses. Uh, you can tag the IP address, and you can create easy uh, and very tiny uh, Python modules to do some test case and collect the, the the results in a very generic way. So you can use it for uh, for put it to the map or feed other services with the results, and um, uh, or maybe feed an other test. So you can link the test. Uh, with each other. In this uh, screen, as you can see, that, uh, there were more than 3 million IP addresses, and uh, um, finally, uh, in this, pass, in this uh, test case, there were 10 key IP addresses which uh, passed the test. So, uh, more about the details. So from census, we got uh, more than uh, uh, 12 million IP addresses, which belongs to FTP services. And uh, we didn't want to test all of them, so we just get uh, three and a half million to test it because this process is not so fast and didn't want to test all of them, just a, just a big uh, set of them. So uh, I test uh, three and a half million of them. So the result was that 91% uh, um, was restricted, which is very good. 9% was uh, when you were able to log in with, with anonymous um, login credentials, and there was zero uh, percentage uh, where you have write access. How this zero looks like in a map? That's not bad. 
So the zero was uh, 10K. So there was, uh, in this data set, um, 10 key IP address and devices where you have write access. So where you have the ability to copy anything there or write the things which are already there, overwrite and change the, the content of it or just put something and host there. So you have a 10 key new uh, IP address to host anything you would like to. Um, I think I don't have to mention that there are so many uh, public data, or sorry, personal data, uh, privacy data, which uh, also could be could be uh, downloaded or or hijacked in this way. So, if we focus on uh, anonymous uh, servers where we have the ability to log in with the uh, anonymous credential, there were uh, four percentage, the 10k, when we have the right access, and when we have the right access. 70% uh, uh, has already infected with one threat, uh, more minor C. C. Uh, and uh, the, the average uh, of the full infection is roughly 90%. So that means that if you offer an IP uh, with a FTP service with the ability to write for anyone, it will write and there will be use for host for some malware stuff or backdoors or tryings. So if you if you let it, they will do it. If you use this ration for the 12 million, that means that uh, roughly 40,000 IP address could be used for this purpose and in this way, which is a quite big number, I think. So some interesting cases. The first one is Seagate, Seagate Central, which uh, has a design flow. Um, they provide, this is not the only one, uh, there are many uh, vendors who use this uh, structure and also uh, Seagate uh, has a NAS OS, which are used by other vendors as well. So you can, you can find this uh, uh, in other vendors as well. So they provide the ability to create users and um, and folders which are restricted and accessed by the users only. Uh, sounds very secure and, and seems uh, very good. But the problem they provide and they give you a, a default account and the default folder called public. And if you le would like to reach the device remotely, which is a very good feature to share and to access your private data. Uh, you have to turn on the remote access and uh, in this situation you let anyone to access the public folder and the public content of it. And if you maybe uh, map your, your NASH inside your uh, net, a home network, you will work with the two folders and maybe we are confused with the data there. So there is no need to, no chance to turn it off and, and many users doesn't know that uh, they already opened the door for, for anyone. So in this situation, there was um, 300 roughly, uh, 300 uh, devices which were uh, found on the, on the internet, which uh, was open. And that means you get a very good ability and a huge amount of storage to host your data, um, which is quite good. So um, in um, Lassive, uh, they use the same framework, they use the same uh, package, so uh, the problem is the same. And in here, um, uh, there is also a couple of terabytes you can use for, for any purpose. And um, as we, we saw that uh, it's used. So uh, we, we saw more minor C uh, on many devices. It's not a very fancy stuff or something as you will, you will see. Um, if you log into a Seagate Central, one of the Seagate Central or even an IP address which already uh, infected or host uh, a malware, you maybe see uh, something like this. So as you can see, there is a there is a photos 
folder and there is a photo SCR which is the mover. So if you uh, map that uh, device, map that folder, you maybe will confuse with the names and as you will see the icon also could be could be something uh, confuse you. So the folder of the application is a folder. Uh, sorry, the, the icon of the application is a folder. So maybe you just click on uh, the the wrong uh, wrong line and just start the, the the application on your on your PC. It's a crypto miner uh, application. A um, couple of years ago, uh, there were many uh, mining stuff and uh, Bitcoin miner um, uh, mover. But uh, after a time, uh, the bad guys realized that it's not the cost effective or it's not a good way to earn money because mining uh, cryptocurrency or mining Bitcoins, um, it's not uh, so easy. So personal PC is not good for it. But uh, the cryptocurrencies are uh, uh, very new stuff and the, the difficulty is much less. So if you join to this group and start the mining in, in the right time, you can earn good money with it. So in this situation, they just create a very, very dummy application based on ANSI scripts. Uh, and um, it took uh, three version of the uh, crypto miner application, which is a stock one. So there were no needs to develop or something. I think it could be developed a couple of days, the whole stuff. Um, so um, there is no big effort on it. How it's uh, it's good spread? Uh, if there is an infected machine, it's trying and scanning the internet uh, for open FTPs where they have the right to write and copy the application itself. So if you open your NAS or something. Uh, they just copy the application there, and maybe you will be confused when you're browsing your uh, your own uh, NASH and um, and accidentally store the application. Then your PC will mine the cryptocurrency and also scan the internet to seek new uh, IP address and new devices where it could hop copy the the instance of it. So the, the spreading process is very dummy. It's very simple, I think. Um, but as you can see, it's already infected 70% of the open FTPs. Um, the TFTP exe, uh, that's, the, that's the application which uh, scanning the internet. Uh, and if they found uh, uh, web-related stuff, uh, HTM, PHP, uh, something like this, uh, they just uh, trying to trying to infect it with uh, putting an iframe uh, the uh, the bottom of the file, and that goes that if you open a page which already infected, uh, you will download. Uh, uh, a zip file, the info zip file, which needs some social engineering or very keen user to to get the, the results and the inside content of the zip. But it seems uh, it's also working. So that's the that's the line when they add some iframe. So if the user is enough keen to to get it, they will open it and finally execute the the malware. So, which uh, makes this uh, this malware interesting for me that uh, usually we do not have information about the malwares, how much money they earn. We have a uh, couple of information, but uh, but not uh, exact information. How much money was earned with uh, a dedicated threat? But in this situation, uh, the mall and the miner was used the. Uh, the Monero pool, and if you have the hash for the the miner, you can get the details of the of the results, how much money was paid, how uh, the the hash, what is the hash rate. Uh, so it makes much uh, interesting. So that needs uh, the obfuscation, the the ANSYS file, and this includes all the information we need. So all the all the hashes 
which needed we have. So there were 20 hashes which was uh, used. And here you can see that uh, uh, the top uh, one of the results. So we were able to track them over and uh, how much money they can earn with, with this single thread. So as you can see that uh, 6,000 uh, euros each day, it's not bad and um, 3,000. 3,000, it's very, very good for a, for a month. So um, I think this is the first time we have exact, um, exact data about the, about the malware. So it's very, very good. And, and based on how difficult it is, uh, I, I think it's, it's very, very good. So my favorites, um, there were some Nazis whom I have already shown you, and there are some some uh, professional devices, which um, a little bit um, scary, I think. One of it, the, the Netvu stuff. It's a uh, it's a uh, CCTV uh, stuff. You can you can monitor uh, big uh, buildings or or things with with these professional devices. Um, if you use senses and you know how to search them, you can find um, uh, a couple of them and. It's a tricky uh, uh, query because I filter for the the FTP banner, but least the the telnet banner. So the two protocol uh, used, and if you check the the banners, you can see that there are telnet banners which requires usernames, and there are telnet banners which uh, from the from um, the, the the common line. So it seems that there are uh, two times, one of the uh, requires login credential and one just open the, the device. So check the, the, the second group, uh, roughly uh, 1,000 uh, devices which are uh, totally open and used with basic uh, credential and basic uh, default settings which do not require any logins or something. And if you open it in uh, in uh, Telnet, you can you can get a prompt, and um, you can do whatever you would like to do. Um, so it's very very scary. I think you can modify the data, you can um, change and and list anything you would like to. If you use the the same IP address and login with FTP and um, check the device in this side on this um, angle, you can get that. Uh, uh, there are already uh, many actors and movers which tries to put some malicious content on, on the device. As you can see, the more miners is already there. And which is very, very scary, uh, the user interface folder is just, uh, just um, the, the bottom of it. So you can reach the, the user interface and you can reach the firmware through the FTP using with anonymous access. So if you would like to change something on the, on the device, you would like to change the, the, the video viewer application, the, the applet, um, or, or you just would like to download all the camera credentials or web configurations or something, you, you can easily do that because they use um, uh, one uh, folder for for everything, and you can reach it by uh, anonymous access. So in this test, we have um, roughly 20 20 percent of the device can be accessed. So you can get the videos as well, and you can write something there and modify the firmware uh, if you would like to. So it's it's very scary. But my favorite one is. Uh, Sorry, I have to change a little bit. Not too easy to find the device because it, uh, it's used for, for SCADA purpose or to control um, devices. Um, there are so many um, um, gadgets they offer. There are routers and uh, collectors. There are sensors and, and many, many things. And um, uh, it could be used um, by, by vendors to set up a um, very fancy and practical stuff like uh, 
uh, lights could be connected with uh, with the controller, and you can control the the street lights uh, through the through the web. You can create scripts. This uh, um, device could be controlled with Python scripts, which makes it much easy to develop and to create a very sophisticated system. So it's very very nice. But the problem, if you do not change the basic settings, it's totally open. So you have everything to to. Um, so you have the ability to game with it, to track it, to collect the information from it. Um, as you see, in the middle of uh, there is the Python part. So uh, you can check the the scripts which are already there, or as you can see the the list of the devices which are already connected and controlled by this uh, equipment. Uh, this um, uh, use a uh, uh, 3G network and as you can see uh, we have the information about the 3G network. So uh, the, the GSM uh, st uh, stuff. So if you, we use the, the, the codes we can find easily the device on a map, which is quite scary. And if you don't like the the lighting stuff or something, you can check the Python part, and you can um, you can manage the script. So if you have a better one, you may be uploaded, and um, you can put some additional feature to the to the device. To control it, as you can see, uh, others already done with it and trying. Uh, maybe Python is not the not the correct language for it, but uh, sometimes they will figure out that which which is the which is the correct one. So, if you search for these devices, you will find a great amount of this, and uh, this is a very good uh, equipment. So, you just write a Python script for the purpose you would like to and upload it and you have a couple of hosts to 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 do the dirty job for for you. So that was my presentation. I think there were so many falls there so um for conclusions and mostly vendors have to more focus on, on security, not providing the uh, default uh, credentials at all because as you can see 20% of the the professional users could use it uh, with it so maybe the default is uh, something which to be uh, turned off thank you any questions to Attila? Hi, have Hi. you tried cleaning up the devices so after you see that you can also hack them, removing the, the infection? No, no, because um, I, yeah, it's a very tricky one to modify the device. I, I think um, to test it and get uh, information about publicly available devices, not using um, default credential, but maybe the anonymous uh, user is something like Open, for example, if you have a IP address and just open with a with a browser, you use the anonymous credential, which may be uh, not problematic. Uh, uh, so you can get uh, the list about the, the the files on the device, but um, make modification on the device. It's uh, it's kind of tricky. I think it could be harm. Um, you can you can alert uh, the the owner of them, and there are a couple of certs which uh, already feed it with the, with this data, and they try to uh, reach the 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 users of the uh, of the IP addresses.
Hi, Adrian, please Hi. speaking. Um, well, thanks for the talk. Um, how do the manufacturers of the devices, in particular Seagate, for instance, or LASI, um, uh, react on, let's say, their design flows? Did you approach them, and do they respond to it? Um, to tell the truth, not uh, not directly, uh, but uh, usually uh, they try to fix it, but um, it takes time to... Well, I would guess it might be a learning curve for them as well. So for the software vendors, uh, it might be, let's say, common sense, but uh, for the producers, I don't know whether they are already, let's say, into this stage of handling, let's say, these flaws in a... Um, well, strategic or let's say continuous manner. Yeah, I I, I think um, to to create a, a very sophisticated um, way to manage the users, sometimes it's too, too it's too professional for home users. I think In many cases they just use the easiest way, uh, putting things together. Uh, and um, and use the, the the simplest, the easiest way to 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 bring it along, uh, bring it alive, and um, and create something which is quite fancy and and just working and not uh, care about how how it uh, could be abused. Hey. Did you see any FTP servers which allow uploading files but not allowing access to them uh, by anybody but uh, their owner? Thank you. So, allow to upload the file but not allowed to download. download. There are many servers, I think maybe uh, polyports or something which lets you write the disk but don't let you uh, to to delete the content of it so you don't have the full write access you can create stuff on them um, but uh, it's a very like, just a couple of person um, which works in this way all right if no further questions let's give Attila a big hand Thank you.